Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to talk about how to read, uh, analyze and understand uh, electrophorogram and specifically I'm going to talk today about what is null allele or allele drop out. And let's take a closer look at this electrophorogram and uh, what we see here that most of the loci are heterozygous because we see two peaks for each locus and here is the names of the loci. But this locus seems like it is homozygous. So we see only one peak here and another peak here would be just a stutter which we can ignore. Uh, a stutter peak here and also one peak here. Uh, this locus is heterozygous and this one is also heterozygous. And now we also can add threshold here under which we can say that everything would be just a noise, all peaks would be just a noise. And usually when we analyze such electrophorograms we put a threshold for a noise as 150 relative fluorescent units. And now as you see if we would just take a look at those peaks that is above threshold we don't have a noise here and it is much easier now for us to uh, analyze what we see here. And also uh, if you notice if you watch my uh, yesterday's video where I was talking about degraded DNA, you would uh, instantly recognize a pattern of the degraded DNA. Those um, alleles that is smaller, like here, for example, this uh, alleles are smaller than this alleles uh, because mo molecular weight uh, of this alleles about 120 nucleotides and this alleles is around 240 nucleotides and as you see those molecules that is uh, longer are, uh, have smaller peaks on our electrophorogram and basically we can draw a line like this. The bigger size of the uh, alleles or molecules the smaller peaks. And now you know that this is due to degradation of the DNA. Uh, much higher chances that those fragments that is longer would have uh, uh, say degradation than those that is smaller. We also can draw such declining line in the third panel but if we analyze this panel uh, the picture actually going to be slightly different. First it goes just like in uh, first and third panel but then it goes up again and this gives us information that uh, we probably should expect here uh, a little peak that is going to be smaller and uh, which should be once again if we just continue this line so probably we expect it to be this higher just like for example peak of the allele of the same size but at the different locus but what we see here that this peak is twice bigger and this gives us information that actually we don't hear uh, allele drop off or drop out. Uh, we don't have null allele here, but actually uh, this locus is homozygous. And when we run a PCR, initial amount of the DNA, which represent uh, two uh, chromosomes in the same locus, and which represent two alleles of the same size uh, would produce such results P 
x that is going to be twice bigger than uh, allele of the same size at different locus. So we can say that uh, this locus is homozygous. But now let's pay attention to this locus. Can we say that this locus is homozygous? If we compare with other loci uh, of the same size, uh, of the same molecular weight, uh, relatively the same. So here is about 120 and here this locus uh, or this allele about maybe 130 uh, nucleotides long. We don't see that this peak is much bigger as we would expect uh, if this locus would be uh, homozygous. So probably we'll, we have here uh, allele drop off and if you would think that this this peak here uh, represent another allele uh, if you watch my previous videos uh, you should know that this is just um, a stutter and uh, actually we do not uh, even use this peak for our analysis because it is below a threshold that we use for our analysis. So this is possible site for allele dropout and um, now let me explain you what cause uh, allele dropout or null allele and how we can uh, confirm if it is uh, allele dropout or if it if this uh, locus is just homozygous. And let me show you or draw uh, a picture, a picture of the uh, heterozygous locus. So we may have one allele of one size and second allele of the different size. Let's say we have one, two, three repeats here and one, two, three, four repeats here. So the top molecule is shorter than uh, the bottom molecule because uh, it has least number of repeats. But otherwise uh, these regions uh, would be the same. Let's say we have a three prime end here and five prime end here. 3 prime end here and 5 prime end here. Uh, this is locus that is heterozygous and uh, we also should have uh, some uh, sites for attachment of uh, primers in order to uh, multiply numbers of both uh, alleles during PCR. Let's say one primer would go here, another primer would go here. And this is should be different types of primers because uh, those sequence is going to be the same of the both molecules but this three prime flanking region sequence is not the same as sequence of the five prime uh, region uh, flanking region. So uh, we also can say that this is going to be primer type 1 and this is going to be primer type 2. And how we can describe this locus? Uh, let's say if we would analyze our electrophorogram, what we would see? We would see two peaks uh, of the same size one would be to the left, another one would be to the right. Uh, this one to the left would stand for the molecule of the smaller size and this one to the right would stand for the molecule of the larger size. So this peak would be uh, of the higher molecular weight molecule and this uh, of the molecule or allele that is smaller but uh, height of the peaks would be same because we expect the same amount of the molecules with uh, fluorescent dye attached to it uh, when we run um, capillar uh, gel electrophoresis and uh, 
numerical uh, numbers for this locus would be uh, 3 repeats and 4 repeats. So we can uh, put these numbers in the CODIS system. But now let's analyze the same locus uh, with the same number of repeats. So we have one molecule with three repeats and another with four repeats. We also have here attachment site for primer type 2, attachment site for primer type 2 here. Once again, this is 3 prime end, 3 prime end here, 5 prime end here, and 5 prime end here. And also we have attachment site for primer type 1. And now let's imagine that somewhere in the middle of the attachment site we have a point mutation. That means that those, uh, our primer would still be able to attach here, but uh, this uh, attachment or annealing wouldn't be as effective. And what we expected our electrophorogram, we expect the same size of the peak that represent first allele that is smaller, but as for the second allele, we expect that peak is going to be much smaller because uh, we also, um, after PCR, would have a smaller number of these molecules. And now, uh, once again, uh, we are going to have the same numbers for this locus. This is going to be 3 and 4. And now let's consider uh, one more variant. Once again, same locus, same two alleles, one with one, two, and three repeats, another with one, two, three, and four repeats. Three prime end here, five prime end here, three prime end here, and five prime end here. And now, again, primer type 2 here, primer type 2 here, primer type 1 here. And now imagine that we have point mutation here. At the side, uh, attachment side for the primer type uh, 1, and once again, if our uh, primer would attach here, uh, it also has, uh, say here, it has 5 prime end and 3 prime end here. If this 3 prime end would be wobble, then DNA polymerase wouldn't be able to attach here and extend new strand of the DNA. So polymerase chain reaction wouldn't work uh, for this allele. And what we can expect to see on our electrophorogram, we expect to see the same peak for the first allele and no peak for the second allele at all, because uh, we are not going to have uh, it at all in our um, uh, capillar electrophoresis and uh, basically that means that we lost uh, one allele. Those uh, it does uh, present here and this locus is not uh, homozygous, it is heterozygous. So how we can uh, specify if uh, this locus uh, just lost one allele due to mutation or if this locus is um, just uh, homozygous. One of the solutions can be that we can use uh, different kits uh, of the primers uh, from the different uh, producer. And different producers are usually using different uh, 
attachment sites or different primers uh, in order to amplify the uh, same um, loci. And uh, another solution would be to use a mixture of uh, different, once again, uh, primers for this locus. So we would know that if we use, for example, different primer and got the same results that uh, give us information that this locus is homozygous. But if we would get uh, another peak here, that means that in this attachment site for this particular uh, primer, we have a mutation here that prevents um, amplification of this allele during PCR. So we shouldn't falsely to say that this is 3, uh, three uh, locus, uh, which is homozygous when it's actually 3, 4. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.